We are excited to have Dr. Marion Walker with us for our Ask the Expert video blog series. Dr. Walker is recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I'm sure very missed. <laughs> and he also is the chair of our medical advisory board. Also here with us is Jennifer Bashar Johnson, our education manager. Many of you watching this know her well. And myself, Amanda Garzon, Director of Communications and Marketing for the Hydrocephalus Association. So today we have a great question. I really like this one because we get a lot, a lot of curiosity around this question. It is from Mina. And Mina asks Dr. Walker if it's unusual for her son to not have had a shunt revision in 20 years. So the lucky, that lucky guy who gets to go 20 years without a shunt revision and maybe will go another 10 more. Is it, um, is it common, uncommon to go for those extended periods of time? Uh, it's, I would say uncommon. Um, again, it's hard to have really accurate data on that. Um, we think most people are going to need, if, they have, if they're shunted in infancy, between two and three shunt revisions uh, until their adult years. Um, obviously, some people need uh, many more than that, and some people don't. So he's one that's on that side of the curve, and uh, obviously that shunt has worked well, and I'm delighted for them. So I'm going to open up this little can of worms, because I like to open up cans of worms. <laughs> So sometimes what we'll see, we'll get phone calls about this and, and Jen jump in, but um, you'll get somebody who's gone 20, 25 years without a shunt revision. And then all of a sudden it's like five, six, mm -hmm. seven shunt revisions in like three months and they're at their wits end. So can you talk about that scenario and why that could occur um, when they've gone so long? That's one of the things we fear most as neurosurgeons. Um, it's a complex uh, physiologic explanation, but simply put, um, let's say you're shunted in childhood mm -hmm. and you have that shunt function for a long time. Uh, you have a certain environment in your head, whatever the pulsations are, whatever the adjustments you've made for the functioning of your shunt, you are in um, what many of us are now calling a certain notch. Okay. A, a, a notch where you live. All of us have uh, have that. Mm -hmm. um, shunted or not. Shunted or not, we we have a balance um, of the pressures and the pulsations within our our head. Okay. A shunted patient uh, probably has those altered some way but many of them are living in that notch that makes them feel comfortable. And then 15 years later, they have a shunt malfunction. And um, it can be very hard to find that notch again. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult to recreate that environment that uh, that that patient had had before. Um, you can try many things. You can try different uh, kinds of valves. You can try different brands of valves. But you need, a surgeon needs a reason to do an operation and needs some confidence that that decision will help. And um, sometimes, it's just extremely hard to find that place where the patient's comfortable again. So that story of having gone a long time and now having many revisions close together is, um, is, is all too common. And really for that patient, are we just, are we talking about then just needing to revise until we find that sweet spot again or the brain kind of figuring itself out and what its new environment is like or well i wish i knew a straight answer to that yeah. uh, as well i think um, the first thing to do is is kind of wait and watch and see if there's a way to let things equalize on their own and that might happen um, 
if the symptoms are bad enough and interfering enough, um, you might be prompted to try something different. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe a programmable valve uh, gives you some options of changing pressures and see uh, um, if that would help. Um, it just I've heard the story many times of, of um, you know, my shunt works so well, and now <clears throat> this doctor can't seem to, to, to get it right anymore. And um, I think I can come to the defense of the surgeon here for a moment because no matter how experienced we are, we all experience this kind of problem in our patients. And... Sometimes we just have to uh, keep trying until we can hopefully make things better. So, Mina, I guess as a mom to another mom, I would say so happy for your son. And I hope that he goes another 20 years without needing a shunt revision. Um, but I think that there's that really challenging part of living in the hydrocephalus world and in the hydrocephalus community of we always have in the back of our minds, feel like we're waiting for that shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. Jen, you probably know this better than anybody, having hydrocephalus yourself. And what are some of the uh, kind of guess, uh, pieces of emotional advice you could give to people um, around that waiting to sh for the shoe to drop mentality? Well, I try not to focus on it too much. Uh, you don't want to let the condition define you. So try to stay busy, um, surround yourself with positive people, and um, just keep living your life, I would say. And I guess after um, 103 brain yes. surgeries, you can say that with confidence yes. that uh, you really, I think you really encapsulate not allowing hydrocephalus to mm -hmm. define you. My favorite person to work with right there. <laughs> well, thank you, Mina, for your question. It's a really great question. And to all of you that have gone for extended periods of time without a shunt revision, we are so happy mm -hmm. for all of you. Um, always no symptoms so that if you if something does start to feel a little funny, you're prepared. But uh, live in the moment for sure. Yeah.